want you to know me. I love you. I want you to love me. And I see good evening, boys and girls. It's so good to see you this evening. And tonight we're going to have a lesson on being kind to those who look different than us. So Miss Paula's going to deliver that in just a moment. Don't forget to sing the song with us and then do the activities that we have planned for you at the very end. I love you all and God bless you. Tell me whose side are you living on? I'm living on the Lord's side. Tell me whose side are you living on? I'm living on the Lord's side. I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living on the Lord's side. I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living, I'm living on the Lord's side. Tell me whose side are you singing on? I'm singing on the Lord's side. Tell me whose side are you singing on? I'm singing on the Lord's side. I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing. On the Lord's side, I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm singing on the Lord's side. Hi guys, I'm so glad to see you. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to spend a few minutes today talking to you about one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible. Now we know that the Bible is the true story of how God rescues sinners through his son, Jesus. And we also know that God's story isn't done yet, is it? Of course not, because we're part of God's story too. And God is still rescuing people through his son, Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? That is so wonderful. So today I wanna to tell you about one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. It's about King David. David started out as just a boy taking care of sheep. Have you guys ever taken care of sheep? I've never taken care of sheep. I've seen sheep and they're so sweet. David was a shepherd boy, but when he grew up, he became the king of God's people. And it's really neat because David was related to Jesus and Jesus is the king of all kings. Jesus is our king. Now, David was a really good guy. The Bible even tells us that David had a heart like God's heart, but that doesn't mean David was perfect, no. In fact, the Bible tells us that David made really, 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 really bad mistakes. Really bad mistakes. Like the baddest of bad mistakes. He did, he really did. Raise your hand if you've made mistakes. Have you made mistakes too? Me too. Well, David made mistakes too, but David wanted to follow God and he wanted to do the right thing. Still messed up sometimes but he really loved God. And one thing that I like about David was because David was kind to people. He was, he messed up sometimes, but David would sit around and just think of ways to be kind to people. Don't you love people like that? I love people like that. So today we're gonna to be talking about one time when David was thinking about ways to be kind to his best friend's family. And that's really sweet because his best friend had been gone for a long time and David wanted to do the right thing. And it's always the right time to do the right thing. Did you know that? That's true. So let's get started with our lesson. David helps Mephibosheth. David and Jonathan were best friends. They promised to help each other. They also promised to always take care of each other's family. Many years later, David was king. Jonathan had died, but David did not forget him or the promise he made to him either. King David asked his special helper, Ziba, is there anyone still alive from Jonathan's family? I wanna be kind to them and help them. Ziba told him about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was one of Jonathan's sons. His feet were hurt. He had been hurt when he was a tiny baby and he couldn't walk. David sent servants to tell Mephibosheth that David wanted to see him. Oh, Mephibosheth was afraid. Why would the king want to see him? Mephibosheth came to David's palace and King David said, don't be scared. I want you to live here. I want us to be friends. I want to be kind to you. David said, I want you to eat with me at the special king's table and I will treat you like my very own son. So Mephibosheth lived in the palace. 
our memory verse this month has been in the book of Philippians. Now we know that the Apostle Paul was probably in jail for teaching about Jesus when he wrote this book. We know that he wrote it to the church at Philippi. We also know that people who lived in Philippi were called Philippians. Kind of like people who live in America are called Americans. People who live in Kentucky are called Kentuckians or people who live in Texas are called Texans. The church at Philippi, the Philippians, they got this letter from the Apostle Paul and it was a wonderful letter. It was all about how God loved them and how they could be joyful even in really bad situations. And in our memory verse, in chapter 4, verse 6, Paul reminds them not to worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Let's say that together. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I love that verse because sometimes I worry. Do you worry too? Yeah, sometimes we worry, but God wants us to know that he is with us even when we worry. And worrying's not wrong. Everybody worries a little bit, but we can always feel comfort and we can feel strength and power knowing that our God, the same God who created the entire world, loves us so much and is going to take care of us and is never going to leave us no matter what we go through. So Paul wanted us to know, Try not to worry about anything and pray about everything. Important, the world needs more kindness and God is kind. Kindness is also one of the fruits of the Spirit that the Apostle Paul talks about in Galatians 5. So the more we get to know God, the more we love God, and the more we read his book, the more God will grow kindness in our lives. But here's a big question, what is kindness? What does it mean to be kind? Maybe that's a question we could talk to our grown-ups about. What does kindness look like at school? Or what does kindness look like when we're learning at home? Grown-ups, what does kindness look like in traffic or at the checkout line at our grocery store? What does kindness look like? God's people are kind. In a book uh, called Canoeing the Mountains by Ted Bolsinger. One of my favorite quotes is, in a moment of crisis, you will not rise to the occasion. You will default to your training. So grown-ups, I'm talking to you. We need to train our children, but we also need to continually train ourselves because kindness may not come naturally for a lot of us. I get that. But the more we talk about God and the more we surround ourselves with God's people, even at a time like this where it's kind of hard to do that, we need to be finding new ways to tell our children about kindness, to remind them the stories in the Bible like David who showed kindness or Jesus who came and just showed us over and over what kindness means. We are people of kindness. So let's make sure we get that through to each other and to remind each other, I need that reminder. Let's make sure we tell our kids that all the time, that we need to be kind, but this is how we do that. So instead of just telling you, I'm gonna model it for you and I'm gonna have accountability partners to help me do it because it is hard, especially in those moments of crisis. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. I can't wait to be back again with you next week and we'll talk a little bit more about the Bible. My friends, get your Bibles out. Go read about David and Mephibosheth. What a beautiful story, right? And I want you to make a list of ways that you can be kind to your friends, to your brothers and your sisters or your cousins or whoever it is that you're spending your time with. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.